Hi and welcome back. So my last blood test was taken on the 4th of March 2023. Let's jump in and let's look at the results. So let's quickly cover the supplements I was taking at the time of this blood test. NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, 1.5 grams a day. Trans resveratrol, 1 gram a day, but only on the days that I don't train. So three or sometimes four times a week. TMG, trimethylglycine, 1.5 grams a day because I take 1.5 grams of NMN a day. Metformin, 500 milligrams, and that's at night before I go to bed. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units a day and 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms. That's the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams of L3 and 8. Hyaluronic acid, that's high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, 200 milligrams per day. Quercetin, 2.5 grams a day, and that's on the first, second and third of each month. Fisetin, again, 2.4 grams a day, first, second and third of each month. Dried parsley, one tablespoon of dried parsley mixed into my full fat yogurt when I take my resveratrol. Uh, and on the days I don't take resveratrol, I still eat the full fat yogurt with the parsley mixed into it. Cert6 activator, 800 milligrams a day and dim for my estradiol levels to keep those down 600 milligrams a day so that's it for the supplements so as before i'm only going to cover the markers that are outside the reference range or have moved quite a lot with inside the reference range first of all let's look at my lipid profile uh total cholesterol still high 201 0.93 they're saying that the maximum is less than 200 so i'm only just above with, with, with regard to total cholesterol hdl 48.64 so that's well within range ldl cholesterol 113.38 they've marked that as high because now they've changed the marker which beggars belief i don't know why they've done that uh, it used to be between 85 and 130 113 for me is under that now and now they're saying it's less than 100 which is ridiculous because 40 is less than 100. And we're now saying for the past three years I've been doing this, two years I've been doing this, it had to be between 85 and 30. Now, if I've got 40, I'm healthy. Whereas last week or the week before, the month, three months before, I wasn't because they're now saying anything under 100 is OK. And most of the studies that I'm watching or I'm seeing that are coming out now are saying that LDL as a standalone marker is not a very good marker of cardiac risk obviously the vegans are going to disagree because this is the one thing that does go down when you're on a, a vegan diet so down to 113 which i think is probably a mistake because i'm normally in the 140 130 135 range we'll we'll have to see what happens next time but to change from 85 to 130 to now being less than 100 as a as a reference range i think is ridiculous triglycerides 148 that's up quite a lot from 103 still below the 150 but that's a number i would like to always keep down vldl which is one that is the dangerous cholesterol and people are now starting to recognize that this is coming out in studies is 29 it's up from 20 but still well below the 40 so that's good my total cholesterol and hdl ratio 415 that's okay ldl ratio with hdl is good and they've started to add now the non-hdl cholesterol they're saying anything under 160 is okay i think for me 153 is a good score too so that's it for lipid profile so move on to blood sugar you can see here that it's back up to six it was down to 5.8 last time it's been six for the six months prior to that and uh, that still got me classed as increased risk for diabetes. My average blood glucose has also gone from 120 to 126. That, that's out of excellent control into fair control. Uh, I spoke to my doctor about this last time. And again, I've got a cons consultation maybe in a week or so to go over these blood test results. Um, I asked her before, having now taken metformin, I think for maybe six months or so maybe for the, since December. Uh, I don't think I was taking in October. It doesn't seem to have made any massive difference to the numbers whatsoever i did ask if i could go to uh 500 grams in the morning and 500 uh, sorry milligrams and 500 milligrams in the evening and she said no this is where we need to be with regard to glucose control uh, i've got one more blood test here in the middle east and then i'm looking to semi-retire back to the philippines and we'll see what the doctors in the philippines say see if they're gonna let me take um one gram a day split into 500 in the morning and the evening just for a three month period to see if it actually affects this blood uh, my so my a1c marker so that's it for blood sugar moving on let's look at my liver profile you can see here all the figures in this column 
are much the same as they were for the last three months. My globulin is still low. Um, I've questioned the doctor about this because I've got four months there. She says they're only just a little bit low, so nothing too uh, much to worry about. Uh, there are other things that she looks at. I'm not sure which ones they are in this list here on the left. But she says if this is low on its own, it's not really an issue. So that's it for liver profile. Moving on to renal, you can see here there's a couple of markers that have moved into the red. Uh, uric acid has gone to from 5.83 to 7.15. It's been up as far as 7.6 before. Um, 7 is the upper limit, so it's only 0.15 over. I'll see what the doctor says about that. Um, my bun, my blood urea nitrogen is 25.9. Um, that used to be, again, 25, so it would, be, it would only be 0.9 over. For some reason, they've changed that now from 25 down to 22.60. Uh, so another change, I'm not sure why. There must have been, a, I'm hoping, a massive amount of studies that say this should be the new um, this should be the new marker. I'm not too sure. My creatinine has gone from 1.07 to 1.24. Uh, the upper level should be 1.1. So again, I'll, I'll talk to the doctor about that. Uh, the blood urea nitrogen and creatinine ratio is high and that's 24.2 and 23.1 is the upper limit so we'll see whether or not she thinks that is, is an issue so that's it for the renal profile so let's move on to my thyroid you can see here the, the two top numbers are in pink and the bottom one's in blue they're not in red that's because these two top the top two in pink they've changed the measurements so nanograms per deciliter or micrograms per deciliter before it used to be 84 that was in range 1.34 whatever that is is now still in range so no issues with that vitamin d down from 82 to 65 but 65 is still well within the 30 to 80 sufficient sufficient range uh, remember vitamin d not a vitamin it's actually a hormone so you should get your levels checked and if you are insufficient or deficient see a doctor and you need to start supplementing if you can't get in the sun vitamin b12 mines up to 510 from 466 so i'm extremely happy with that testosterone my total testosterone is down from 586 to 441 that said it's still well within the range although the range is from 86 to 788 which is a large large bracket and i've heard andrew huberman criticizing this quite a lot saying that there needs to be a smaller bracket and there needs to be more um, age groups as well you can see here for someone who's 16 to 21 their bracket is 118 to 948 so technically at 441 i've got the testosterone of someone between the age of 16 and 21 which i think is ridiculous i think the medical profession should look into getting more accurate um, brackets and age groups and not worry about moving this the reference range for uric acid up and down by maybe two or three points uh, the next one is iron. You can see here my iron down from 115 to 62, but still well within the range. 50 is the, the lower end. And for my total iron binding capacity, it's 266, down slightly, but again, still well within the range. Homocysteine up to 13.64, but still well under the 30 that is recommended. And my C-reactive protein up from 0 0.62 to 0 0.72, but again, still well below the 3.0 that is recommended for that. So moving on, my lipoprotein A, you can see here, up from 5 to 10, quite a big jump, but still well under the less than 30 that it needs to be. Now, this is a marker for heart disease, so it's important I do stay well under that three, uh, that 30.0. My apolipoprotein, you can see here, we've got the, um, the A1, the B, and the uh, ratio down that one's slightly down this one's slightly down but they're all still well within the reference range so i don't have any issues with that amylase you can see here down from 78 to 69 but again well within the range of 28 to 100 lipase in the same way down from 159 to 142 but the upper range is 393 so again happy with that my blood tests, you can see here, this column, everything is in the blue, so no issues or changes from the previous blood test. Uh, the second element of the blood test, you can see again, everything here is in the blue, so not really anything to worry about there. Urine analysis, 
everything again back into the blue. You can see here that in December it was positive. Um, and you may remember that I talked about having a, a throat infection later on in uh, after that. I don't know if, if this picked it up and then the throat infection actually kicked in sometime later in January. Um, but there'll be more about that in my three month update in the next uh, video, because when I visited the doctor and I thought I kicked it, um, actually, my body still had the infection. So um, it's gone now, which is probably why this is all still in the blue. Uh, but we'll see how that pans out in the next three months and also for my next blood test or my urine test. EGFR 64, that's down from 76. Um, and it actually, it needs to be higher. So it needs to be up equal to or greater than 90 regard to kidney issues. Uh, that said, the doctor isn't really worried about this because someone of my age is going to have some kind of issue. Uh, and this has just got me down as a mild decrease. Uh, estradiol. Now you can see here it was 41. Then I started taking dim. It knocked down to 30 and then went up to 36.6. And this is around December. So it's when I went to the Philippines and I couldn't guarantee I will be in the house at lunchtime as I'm always in work. And when I'm here in the Middle East. So I started taking all my tablets first thing in the morning, which included I would take my two um, dim tablets first thing in the morning. Then when I had that test in December, you can see that it was 36.6. So it had gone up. So what I started doing was then taking, splitting my dose again, 200 in the morning, 200 at lunchtime, 200 in the afternoon. Uh, and as I said, when I first started taking this and I explained the dose that I was taking here in October, it was just bro science. I thought I'd, I'd spread it out equally. That said, it's gone back down now to 31 from 36, which is closer to the 30 when I first started taking it. I don't know if that's the reason I will continue to take three doses of 200 a day, morning, lunchtime and in the evening. And in the next three months, we'll see what happens to that number there. But i um, happy with the estradiol, estradiol, which is the estrogen marker for men, uh, is, is now down to 31, well down from the 40 that it was when I first got tested. So the next test I did was for my iodine. Um, that's because so I didn't do testosterone. I did iodine instead. Uh, somebody made a comment on one of my previous videos and it was making reference to the CERT-6 activator, which is seaweed based, talking about seaweed and how it will negatively affect your um, iodine levels to dangerous levels. And you should be very careful about that. So I had my iodine levels checked um, and you can see here. My score is 52.4 and the bracket is between 40 and 80. So I'm well within the the reference range there. Um, and this is no disrespect to the person that made the comment. Um, it, I'm just curious as to where people get these, these kinds of um, statements or this information from. Uh, I know there are many sensationalists on YouTube that will write on a thumbnail and also on the... Um, on the title of the video, something dramatic or something worrying to get you to click on it to to watch it. So, you know, taking seaweed as a supplement is is life threatening. Um, it may well be that it was one study done in mice and they were genetically uh, modified so that they would absorb more iodine than the normal human being would. Or they would take six or seven or 20 times the normal daily dose of iodine and that would push them into the dangerous spectrum. But obviously that's too much of a video or too much in the video to watch. I know that on my channel, an eight minute video on average, looking at the stats at the back of the YouTube channel, people watch for between three and four minutes. So if someone's watching an eight or 12 minute video, and, and usually these sensationalists will do a 12 minute video because that gets them more YouTube and revenue. And they'll talk about the, the damaging effects of seaweed and they'll go into you know a lot of the background of seaweed and people will, clip, will, will skip past that. And they're probably skipping past the part where they say it was a, 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 a test or study done in mice uh, and they were genetically enhanced to absorb more iodine and they would take six or seven times more than the recommended daily um, dose for human beings. But that's all missed by them. So I've done the iodine level. I'm happy with that. I'm probably never going to do that again. I would much rather be testing my free testosterone and spending money on that than spending it on iodine. So that's it for the blood test results um, with regard to iodine. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the video and let me know if you perhaps see something that I don't, although I am speaking to the doctor this Saturday. Um, talk about the results. If there's anything that she sees which she thinks is concerning, I will cover those 
in my next blood test update video. Uh, remember what I said about the, the reason I did the iodine test and it ended up falling flat. Now, there are those YouTubers that will make a sensational thumbnail and a devastating title just to make you click so that you, you know, they want the, the ad revenue. If it's a, an eight minute video, you need to watch the whole eight minutes because if they've done their due diligence and sometimes they don't, somewhere in that video will be the detail like I said about the, the, the double the dose that human normally takes or the, the mice were genetically engineered that actually negates the statements on the title or blows away completely the sensational thumbnail. And you can rest assured that what you're doing is OK or perhaps you need to speak to your doctor. Well, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe and I will see you soon. Bye for now.